Hi everyone, hope you're well. Hope this is live. I ought to just check. Do say hello if you're there because that will help me. Hope you're all well and that you're having a relaxing Sunday so far. Don't know how my phone works. <laughs> right. Are we live? Yes to me that we're live. help if I put my microphone on. Maybe that's better. Hope everyone's well. Hello! <laughs> Hi Sue. Hi Kathleen. Hi Alison. Right, I can turn my phone off now. Yes, I know people are there, which means that you must be able to see me. So, hope everyone's doing well. Hi Ray. <laughs> oh, I, last week Square, I yeah, I hope you're enjoying doing it. I it, I had so much fun playing with the stitches. I've got our panels that we've done so far this month here. Um, so I've got, uh, this was our first week in October, which was our wedding bouquet, which I really liked. I think that one went down really well. People seem to quite like that one. And this one really surprised me. I, wasn't sure whether anybody would enjoy that, but it's my number one video from the last 10 that I've uploaded. So clearly that one was extremely popular, which surprised me a little bit. Um, but yeah, I guess people like slow stitch, don't they? And the visible mending thing. And then this was last week's and this was me just playing really with what the stitches could do for us. What could we create with these stitches? and um i've had quite a lot of fun with that one i really enjoy doing it i the writing frustrates me every time i look at it but i'm just living with it <laughs> um but yeah so there we go that's our seeds prompt from this week so we are in a five week month i have got something um planned for next week and it's going to be linked to what we do today. So I um, hope you are all ready to go. You might not have everything you need for this week. So I was late putting it on. We broke up on Friday. So um, yeah, it's been hectic this term. I'm going to be working on this nice sort of sandstone felt. I really like this one. It's probably my favourite felt out of all the ones that we use in our kits so I, this is my go-to felt just checking up on uh chat um who else is here hi karen hi nikki um yeah <laughs> yeah that interwoven hairy moan band it's i have to check it every single time i do it because it is an absolute brain buster it's it's really complicated and um, because if you're used to doing herringbone stitch because you have to throw in that extra step of going underneath the stitch you've just done um this it can if you forget that which is what i did in the video um it it just doesn't work the the interweaving bit doesn't work and you end up thinking you're following the instructions and nothing quite doing what it's supposed to do because the thread just unthreads itself so um yeah don't worry if you find that tricky it takes some practice to say the least <laughs> um but uh yeah i think i've really enjoyed this month's stitches i do love woven stitches um they, they're just so fun to do and we're going to play with one in particular today um so I've been loving our spider's web wheels and I was I had this in mind to do right from the beginning. So I planned out, I 
I had planned out the entire year before we even started in January. Um, and I've been looking forward to this one so much because this is a particular love of mine. It's a particular favourite thing to do. I'm just going to adjust my blinds a little bit because when I set up this morning, there we go, that's a bit better. When I set up this morning, it was absolutely pouring with rain. It has been torrential rain all morning here in Lancashire and um, it's now stopped and has brightened up and now everything's too bright. But I hope that's okay. If it gets dark as we go along, just say something in the comments because I won't particularly notice. I think the camera picks up light very differently to what it looks like in real life. So this is what I'm working on. You can probably just see just outside of the shot, I've got loads of neutral threads. This was a, a brilliant find. I found loads of these in a charity shop, loads and loads of uh, these massive rolls of, it's sort of crochet weight thread. It's almost like pearl cotton, but it's quite matte, 100% cotton. And I've just got tons of it and it's been really useful um, for our project today. I've got some of my sheepy sweet treats. I think people have been asking about these. They're actually really inexpensive. I picked them up from a, an online shop called The Wool Mouse and they are pretty inexpensive. You get a lot of thread for your money and it goes a long, long way. I've been using these for ages and the the only way I can tell that the balls are any smaller is that the, the sleeves are loose on them so I've got a few colours of that I've got some natural linen thread I'm not sure I'll use this but I this is one of my favourite threads I absolutely love it I've got just one pearl cotton um, I've got that just in case I want some sheen in there and then I've got this that apricot um, Stuart thread, uh, Natalie Stuart cotton that I used back in a uh, bouquet. I think I used it there. No, I used it here for the spider's web wheel in a mend prompt. And I've got a cat's cloths thread here, which I really like. It's sort of neutral blues and pinks and greens, some grey in there as well. And they're sort of those barely there colours that work really well. And then I've got this one, I don't know if I'll use it because it's quite thick and the colours are quite strong. So I, but I just, I quite like the mix. So I've got it out just in case. So that's what I've got. And you might have noticed in the description for this one, I said we were going to use some rings. And I've got um, a bag of rings here that I got from Amazon. And I've linked it in the description below. There are five different sizes. And what we're doing today, I'm not going to be able to get all of them done. So I have made, I pre-made a few. So we're going to do hopefully two on camera. So I've got this nice, quite large ring. I'm just looking for a tape measure. So in this set, you also get D rings in this set um, that I've linked below. So that's sort of four centimetres ish, and then there's a three and a half centimetre one. That's a three centimetre, and that one is just under two centimetres. So there are loads of them. You get five of each size. I think there might be a fifth size in there as well. Is that one different again? Yeah, I think that one's a bit bigger. So you get five sizes of rings and um, they do have a split in them, but it's pretty, pretty much sealed up. They are supposed to be welded shut. So as long as you don't use too fine a thread, you'll be fine with that. You can get plastic rings. You can use um, P rings if you want to. You could use curtain rings if you've got some leftover curtain rings. We've got loads of them kicking around somewhere in our house because we've bought curtain rings that come curtain rails that come with curtain rings and not needed the curtain rings for various reasons. So um, that's what I'm using. There are lots of alternatives. 
So for those of you that are eagerly awaiting me, telling you what we're doing, <laughs> um, this week we are going to learn how to make dorset buttons. And I've made, lo I've made a number of these in my years as a, a stitcher and crafter. And I used to run a workshop in Lincolnshire where we did a different craft activity every week and it was a free sort of community event. And one week we made giant dorset buttons and these are actually um, bangles. I bought a, a massive job lot of bangles from uh, eBay. This is years ago. And we use them to make giant dorset buttons and these were all done with wool. And if I bring them up close, you can see that inside the centre there is a spider's web wheel. And we just, I'm going to show you how to make it all around the um, the rings. And these these big ones took ages because there's so much, there's actually so much stitching there. And I use wool because it's thicker and covers more space more quickly. So I made three of those different sized bangles and different sized rings. And we played around with making different combinations of colours and things like that. But a traditional dorset button is actually just a single colour. So I've got one that I made yesterday here. I've put a little bit of scalloped edging on this one, which we may or may not be able to cover. Um, see how time goes. Traditionally, dorset buttons are just white. This is that um, peachy variegated thread. And they are made with just two stitches really so you've got a blanket stitch and then you've got the spider's web wheel around the center and you can create them so that you have a shank on them at the back so you can use your excess thread to create a little shank and you can actually use them as buttons we're just going to use them decoratively so that's one where i've left uh, you can see i've left holes around so I haven't uh, woven all the way out to the edge um, and then I've made another one here that is just quite simple so this is a far more traditional dorset button I'm trying to get it as close to the camera as I can um, so that is just the wrapped circle and then spider's web wheel in the center and I'll just put a tiny little band of a different color in there just to add a little bit of something else so that's going to go on there and then I made a large one with the largest ring in the set and this one is mostly some of that cotton thread and I've just used some slightly different colours moving out to the edge there so I've got my neutrals so this is what we're going to make so I hope hope you're up for that <laughs> Um, if you don't have any rings, as I say, I've linked down below, but you, you can actually, you, costume jewellery is really good um, because there's, there are often circular bits of um, like wire or metal. You could even create a wire ring if you've got some, um, uh, if you've got some floristry wire or things like that, you could, you could make a circle with it if you wanted to just wrapping it around something so that's where we're heading and I'm just going to make a little display of buttons I'm hoping that we will be able to get another one that's that size yeah another one that's that size done and then I've got another teeny tiny one like this one here this one looks slightly bigger because of the scallops on it so I'm thinking that I'm going to arrange them like that um, but we'll we'll see how we go. So I'm just going to move that to the side, and I thought I would start off by showing you the beginning of the process. I'm just going to have a quick look at my comments while I'm psyching myself. <laughs> this could go um, this could go any anywhere as we attempt this. The starting off is the bane of my life. So I will just put in my disclaimer that I don't have very good dexterity in my hands and I do find it hard to hold lots of things all, <laughs> all at once so um, why I do this to myself I don't know um, so I'm glad that you're looking positive hi Nikki <laughs> um, 
I'm, I'm glad that uh, you found it easier when you were using different coloured threads. That's really positive. Um, that's that threaded interwoven herringbone band that has boxed people this this month. Um, so <laughs> um, it's a it's a nice one to pull out every now and again. So, oh, Ray, you've had a go at them before. Yeah, we'll we'll get to the scallop trim in a bit. Um, it's I'm not entirely happy with the finish of mine, but um, yeah, I was going quick and it was very late last night. So um, this doesn't bode well because I've got a knot already. So the first thing that you have to deal with when you're making these is that we're going to use an extremely long piece of thread. And I'm going to try and do this little one all in one piece of thread. Ideally, that's what you want. You want to be able to not have to start and finish a thread. This is just a noose knot. It's, it's just tangled up on itself. And um, so whenever you've got a loop like that, it's because it's twisted around itself. So I'm just trying to undo that while I talk. So it's. The process is actually very simple, but like a lot of embroidery skills and needlework skills, the the technique is actually fairly simple, apart from interwoven herring, herringbone band. Um, the technique is, is pretty simple most of the time. It's the art is in the finish and practicing so that you can get a perfect finish and none of mine are perfect so we're just playing and having a go uh, i think you'd have to be making these all the time to, to really master the finish but what i've got here if i can just untangle this little bit is about three meters of thread and i'm just using this white cotton thread it's like one of these it's slightly whiter than the others traditionally dorset buttons were white and there are different slight variations that you can make and i'll talk about those along the way but i'm going to show you the traditional approach to these so you I'll, I'll tell you ways that you can tweak it a little bit just out of preference if you want to and um i'll try and give you some tips along the way I do not claim to be an expert in these at all. Um, I've made a fair few, but I haven't made them for a long time until recently. So I've got about three metres of thread here. I'm just <laughs> trying to show you how long it is. So that's my thread and I've got a blunt needle. So this is a tapestry needle that I'm using. You can see it's got a blunt end there, so it's not sharp at all because I don't want to pierce the thread itself. I want to sort of work around. Um, I want to be able to work around the thread and not catch it with the tip of my needle. So I'm going to start with this small ring because this stage that we're going to start with is quite time consuming. And I have got one already set up over here that we'll come to later. But I wanted to show you the starting process. So lots of people recommend, um, we're going to call this a button mould. Look, I've tangled it again. As it gets shorter, it becomes much easier to manage. It's just, it is just a noose knot. There's no actual knot in there. So loads of people recommend rubbing the, um, the actual ring with beeswax i can't actually find my beeswax right now so i'm just going to skip that bit so what we're going to do is coat this um ring this metal ring with blanket stitch and there are different ways to do it the easiest way to start is to just knot your thread onto the ring um so just put a simple sort of overhand knot around the ring like that just one and then it sort of holds itself in place but which is fine and you can do that but the the knot won't be invisible 
and it isn't the traditional way of doing it so if you're in doubt it might be a good way to start a first one particularly if you're making a larger one larger ones are more forgiving and um, so if you're doing your first one maybe you can start like that but i'm going to show you the traditional way of doing it so i'm going to try and keep my thread it's going to go off the table um out to the side and try and keep it unbunched because that's when we start getting problems and i'm just going to hold my thread around the edge of my ring there and i'm going to take my needle through the loop pull all that thread through keep hitting my camera stand <laughs> sorry if you hear a, a twanging noise um it's just me hitting my camera stand so i'm making a loop like that so i've taken it through the um ring and i've made a loop over the back and i'm just going to take my needle through that loop and this is just the first blanket stitch I'm just pulling all that thread back through and that will form my first blanket stitch no it won't <laughs> what well, look it's gone wrong already It's hard talking and stitching at the same time. Right, I'm going to take it through. Because I'm working backwards. Right, there we go. So I've made my loop. I've pulled it out of my own hands. Right. I'm sorry, calm down. We're going to have one of those comedy moments where I can't even begin, aren't we? Right. Third time's the charm. <laughs> oh no, I've got it. I have got it. No, I haven't. <laughs> oh, crikey. How embarrassing. Get a grip. <laughs> this is what I'm like in a classroom. The number of times I call myself a stupid woman in front of my class because i'm losing the plot slowly doesn't bear thinking about my my classes come to know and love me <laughs> right hi laurie oh new york hello thank you and constance hello <laughs> um from london so constance you you live in new york now fabulous love that um now i right i'm just going to take this off camera just to deal with the mess that i've got myself into by talking and stitching at the same time um <laughs> please bear with me i'm so embarrassed crikey i'm having a meltdown and we've barely even started um upstate does that mean out of the the actual city of New York and out into the leafier suburbs. Is that what upstate means? To educate me. I've only been to America once. I've never been to New York, but I desperately want to go. Quite like the idea of doing Christmas in New York one day. Right, nobody look, nobody look at the mess that I've made. This is like cat's cradle. <laughs> I don't know what I've done. Oh, crikey. I'm so embarrassed. This is worse than the, um, <laughs> than the couching last month. Can't even work out where my thread's going. I might need to get a new piece of thread. <laughs> because there's only so long that I could make you watch this. Before. It actually turns into a British farce. This is like an episode of Miranda. Right. No, I'm just going to, I'm going to start again. Right. Here we go. Let's get my needle. Right. So let's pretend none of that happened. Let's get some thread. So I want about three metres of thread.
Yes, absolutely, Sue. That is exactly it. I'm not very good with small children. I'm much better with teenagers. That's what I deal with every day. And it the threads too new. We'll put it down to that. <laughs> yeah, I should do. Zoe is off busily doing something else. She has become properly grown up since starting secondary school and she is just being awesome um she she will want me to pass on because she is so proud of it that she has one student of the half term at her school in french of all things which she was insisting she was going to hate and it turns out that she is really very good at it so um, I do think it's partly because she baked a cake. Look, see, I've started a new thread and I've got it first time. Right, so all I've done is, without thinking about it, done a blanket stitch around my ring. So that's it. And I've got hold of the tail. So you can see I made a loop and I've gone through it. I've got hold of the tail and I'm holding that with the ring. There we go. So now we can carry on so I'm, all I'm doing is blanket stitching around the ring and the only tricky thing about it is managing the thread because it is just a straight blanket stitch nothing complicated and it's the pulling the thread through that keeps it time consuming but you'll be surprised at how much thread this tiny little button is going to take up so this is very very thread hungry so i really love making these with variegated threads i just love the effect of the changing colors and if you have some 100% cotton thread like this you could um, do some hand dyeing if you wanted to and just make a unique thread of your own design I've got myself into a tangle again the problem and um, it's because I'm working around the camera that's that's what's <laughs> that's what the problem is so my camera stand is right where my hand needs to go. It just makes it really tricky. Because I can't do my natural stitch movement. Here it comes. Oh man alive, I can't believe how this is going so disastrously. <laughs> I've just made three in a row with no problems. And I come to do it in public in front of an audience. Just look like an absolute numpty. Just realised another problem that I've created for myself. Wonder if anyone can spot it. On the little shot in the corner, I have forgotten to put my glasses on, so I also can't see what I'm doing very well. So, this is just going to be fabulous. So, Mr. Tanisari, if you are watching, my glasses are in my school bag. If you want to bring them to me, I'd be very grateful. Here we go. Just pulling it backwards and forwards because it's it's helping me to just untangle, work out where the the tension is, untangle it. I promise you, I'm making this look much harder than it actually is. 
I found my tangle. Right. Ah, it's coming. Right, talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> She's having a night. <laughs> nightmare yeah she made so sorry back to zoe she made a german apple cake they do a european cake competition european bake-off and children are inspired to cook or decorate a cake that is on a european theme so she cooked a german apple cake with a streusel topping and she won the prize for the best tasting cake that was produced so lots of people did decorations she made bunting of all the flags of countries in the eu um and other nations that she knew about and suspended it over her cake but her cake was voted best tasting so she was very pleased with herself and she won a mug i guess to make a hot drink to have with your cake so she did that and um, is just loving being a secondary school student. I teach secondary school students who hate wearing blazers. I think it's been one of her life goals to um, actually go to school in a blazer. Um, so she's absolutely loving every minute of being at secondary school. Right, coming there. Almost there. Got a shambles. So this would be really helped. This is partly because I'm using thread that is not silky. It's it's raw cotton. And um it's quite coarse. So if you are already thinking there's no way I'm making one of those because even Rebecca can't do it, please don't worry. I've chosen the wrong thread here to demonstrate this with. So this is the cause of all of my woes. I may just abandon this thread because it's not working for me. That is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a different thread because this will only work with beeswax. Right, so let's just pretend the last 15 minutes has not happened. <laughs> we'll just do a, a little Doctor Who time travel and I'm going to go to Silky Thread. Let's do one of the, shall I do, um, I wonder if I should do a grey one. That one's that. Maybe this one. Oh, let's. Oh, I don't know what to do now because I was going to do a plain white one. I think that's that. No, it's not. Let's do. Let's do this peachy one here. Right. Let's do a silkier red. This is going to make everything better. Right. Here we go. I have not had this much trouble with any of the Dorset buttons I have made. This is what happens when you do things live. This should have been a video and then you wouldn't have been off by my ineptitude. <laughs> right, here we go. Right. Now my hair's falling out. There we go. Right, so back to plan a so i'm just doing a straight button uh blanket stitch around the edge see how easy that looks now i'm using a thread that doesn't stick to itself magic <laughs> right sometimes one of the things that we get taught as teachers in secondary school is that you have to pick your battles some things are not worth fighting with and I really wanted to do a nice white dorset button in the traditional style. It is not worth fighting for because that thread is 
just not going to be my friend. So, right, I'm hoping that you can see that that is actually very straightforward. When you're working with a Mercerize thread, which is a thread that's got that silky finish, there we go. Um, bit focus. It's actually really straightforward. Focusing on what's on, on the table. Oh, let's move that out of the way. Now the camera won't fade. Things working. So hoping you can see that. And I'm just going to blanket stitch all the way around. Now I've got that tail at the start you can fold it back on itself but i think it makes it a bit lumpy so i like to catch it when i come back round so we're just going to blanket stitch all the way around so i'm going to catch up on the comments i'm sure you will have all had some helpful advice for me in my panic <laughs> while i'm trying not to totally lose it Right. Yeah, I think it's like that white stuff is like dishcloth yarn, stuff that people crochet dishcloths with. Um, and it's, it's, you, it, I mean, it, it is possible. And I'll, I'll, now I feel like I want to make one with that thread just to show you that it is possible. But, um, I don't know where I'd, where I've put my beeswax. If I had some bead beeswax, it would work much better. Beeswax fixes almost everything with embroidery. So I'm just doing my blanket stitch. And what I'm trying to do as I go along is just keep it as tight as I can. So I'm, I'm pulling it fairly taut. I don't want it so tight that it won't move on the ring. So I can move that around. But I want it... I don't want any bagginess and I want to keep the stitches right next to each other as I go. I know it looks like I've got a massive clump there, which I have, but it, it, if I just pull it, it will just untangle. Every now and again, it would be worth just making sure your thread is untwisted. So you can let your needle hang free and it will un untwist itself. You're going to twist it up quite a lot, repeatedly doing this blanket stitch. So, back to... Uh... <laughs> there we go. So, as you get round, you can then start covering up the tail that you've left there. And you might decide that it's a little bit too long. so. I tend to, I only want it to go about halfway around the ring. So, and start catching it in. I just want to get around far enough so that I can show you how I catch it in because I've experimented a little bit with this. I think I've got a little trick that works quite well. Or catching in that tail. So do let me know what you've been doing with your Sunday. As I say, it's been pouring with rain here, and um, my son's just done a, an eight-day run of early shifts in his job, so he was very, very tired needing a bit of a treat and he is a massive fan of an english breakfast so that's what he woke up to today um so we've had a family breakfast and we've just sort of potted about really this morning. my my daughter has done a bit of room reorganization and has switched out a rug from uh, one from elsewhere in the house <laughs> Don't know where she got the idea to do that from. But um that's what she's been doing. So she's been cleaning her room and manoeuvring rugs around. Now she's doing a bit of art, I think. So 
who's been doing that. Mr. T has been uh, playing chess with his online chess buddies. So he's been up to, he's been doing some of that. I've been setting up for today. I've upgraded my laptop in the last month. So I've had to be working on all the different settings so that you can hear me. I had a bit of a mystery session this morning with sound coming from the desktop that I couldn't seem to get rid of and then worked out finally oh the sense of achievement when I worked out how to get rid of the mystery sounds um so I hope the sound is okay and that you can hear me all right and finding that everything is working better these days I think I was pushing my old laptop which is getting on for 10 years old now, pushing it to its elastic limit with what I've been expecting it to do over this year with the amount of videos I've been making and editing. So um, I'm very relieved. It's a bit of a game changer for me. So you get the idea. Um, I, I've got a tangle there. I'm not going to make you sit through me doing that. So what you need to do when you have fully wrapped your ring is add some spokes. So I've already put the spokes in on this one and um, because it, it just took a little bit of working out. I've put fewer spokes on this one. Basically, the bigger the ring, the more spokes you need. It's just like making a, a spider's web wheel stitch. If you're using a big circle, you need lots and lots of spokes. If you're using a smaller circle, you can get away with fewer. So I haven't got as many on that one. And I wanted to experiment with this one. So I've got a sort of medium sized wheel and I've got how many? Two, four, six, eight. So there's 10 on there, I think. Nine, I think. So um, you can experiment and decide how many you want but what what you basically need to do is carry on with the same thread and um, we're just going to imagine that I have um, got blanket stitch all around that and you basically start off by going down and crossing the center of the button like that and then you are going to work your way around it's gonna stick very well because no thread on it you work your way around and create a sort of mesh like that of stars of uh, like a sort of star however many times you want spokes so you work your way around just wrapping across the center you always need to cross the center and it will look like a star at first so the threads won't line up because you're working around. So it will, it will go like that um, as you work your way around. And then before you finish off your thread, you bring your thread up through to the spokes and cross the center, pull it back down. And as you do that, it pulls the spokes that are all going off in star shapes, pulls them together. So they become parallel across the ring. So you can see I've got uh, a spoke there on the front and the back, and those stitches across the centre have pulled it, um, pulled it central, and it just makes everything line up really nicely, so that you can have proper spokes to work with. So. Then I've just threaded through and knotted that off at the back there, um, at the centre of um, at the centre of the cartwheel, I suppose. That's that's sort of what we're doing. So I've got some more of this thread. I've deliberately finished it off because I wanted to show you what to do if you underestimate how much thread you need. Um, and run out so i i just about had enough to make my spokes there you can see i've just left the little tail 
of the knot so I've knotted it off I've left a little tail and I've left it shorter than the distance from the center to the outside edge of the spokes so here we go so I've threaded up my needle with another quite long length it's not as long this time because I won't need as much and what I'm going to do is where that little tail is in the center I'm going to line up the start of my thread along the same spoke and I'm going to come up to the left of that that spoke so I'm just starting at my sort of 12 o'clock my north facing spoke gradually pulling the thread through and this is this is the fiddliest bit starting it off I want my two tails so now I've got two tails there caught in by that thread that has come through pulled it through too tight let's do that again so I'm going down to the left of that spoke and catching in the threads and then I want to come just going to come up again to the right of that spoke and then I'm going to go over the next spoke around so I'm working round clockwise around the spokes that way so I've gone I've sort of done a loop a, a woven loop um, and I'm holding on to the two thread ends that I've got there and they're going to basically be woven in to that spoke so now I'm coming down through here and I, I'm i now going to start doing my spider's web wheel so I'm gonna, I've gone back over this spoke here I'm going to come forward to and come up to the left of that spoke So I've wrapped back over one I've come under two and back up again then I'm going to go back over one forward under two and this is the spoke where all my loose thread ends are and once I've gone over this one again I'll be able to let it go because it will be kept in place not there deal with that before it gets any worse okay so I'm just making sure my thread ends are caught in against the spoke going back over that spoke Pulling it nice and tight and then I'm coming forward under two so I'm at the next spoke along and now because I've caught those thread ends in twice now so I went over them the first time and then I've worked back round and gone over them again I can just hold my button at the end there oh there's one other thing that I've forgotten to mention let me just mention it quickly so when you finish your blanket stitch you'll have this sort of ridge around the edge where the blanket stitches are and it's this is a point of preference so you can roll them round all the way so that they face inside the ring like that but traditionally they would be on the back as almost like a sort of stand I suppose for the button um, so that's what I've done here so you be able to see and I just want to focus on that all the time by the way you should be able to see that my ridge is sort of running around the center of the back of the metal ring there so you just that's why you don't want to pull them so tight that they can't move because you want to slide that ridge around to the back and then you get a nice smooth front on your button so from this point we're just creating a spider's web wheel 
so we're going to keep coming forward under two and then back over one and every time we come past that um, spoke where the two ends are we are going to make sure we're wrapping over the top of the two ends and they will just disappear every now and again they will get hooked under the stitch that you're just making so um, just unhook them and once they're nicely wrapped in you can um, pin them shorter it's fine so I find it easier to just drop the needle down rather than trying to hook it round like you would if you were doing a stitch I just drop the needle down and pull the needle back up rather than trying to do both movements in one it does make it a little bit more time consuming but it's easier to see where you're up to and I think you can pull it tighter as well you get a much tighter neater finish so I'm just going to keep doing this until it's there's enough wraps there for you to start seeing the effect you should be able to see it quite quickly I'm also noticing and it's quite hard to position them first go um, if you notice early on that your spokes aren't quite where they should be so the spacing isn't quite even you can just hook your needle underneath the top and sort of lift them round a little bit and even them up um, and I would do that sooner rather than later because otherwise you're going to twist the spokes and you'll get a peculiar looking button So we're just going to keep doing that then be about changing colours if we really want to do that. Um, so okay, I'll just pull my needle out. Um, what I'm going to do as well here, this is uh, another little tip, I'm actually going to tie my thread onto my needle which is something that I often do, I did this quite a lot in our weaving video, it just stops your needle unthreading all the time because if when you're using blunt needles the eyes tend to be really really big and it can be just frustrating if you just have to keep Rethreading your needle constantly. So um, I've just done a, a double knot around the eye there. You can also double up your thread if you want to cover more ground quicker. I I've got I've got a variegated thread here, so I want the variegations to work. So I'm not going to do that because it'll just muddle it all up. Um, so not the most thrilling to watch <laughs> but it will emerge quite quickly I think and you'll be able to see so I'm back where my thread ends are now so I'm just making sure I'm at the right spoke so I've got one more spoke to do before I have to catch in my, my two ends And as you work your way out to the button, obviously your thread is going to get much smaller, much shorter and much more manageable. So it's, it is these early stages that are the tricky bit where you've just got to manage all that loose thread. just I keep stopping talking because I'm just trying to concentrate while I'm dealing with the bit near the thread ends so that I don't end up moving them so that they poke out somewhere they shouldn't. Um, I find as well that if you are worried about whether your button is centralised I tend to find that it, it tends to correct itself so if you're worrying that your Folks are a little bit off centre, the centre of your 
wheel is not quite central, just be reassured that it does tend to self-correct as you fill in your spider's web wheel. So not far off you being able to see the effect here. And you can play around with designs of this. You can um, you can leave spaces. So on the uh, that one with the scalloped edge, I've left a space only woven out a little way and left a space. It is possible to leave a space and then weave some more threads in. You have to be really careful with how you start your new thread. So it doesn't slide down. Um, you can even add beads onto your spokes and weave in beads if you want to. But I thought we well, my plan was to keep it simple, but um, <laughs> I've made it. I've done a really good job of making it look much harder than it actually is. Um, so it's it is quite a repetitive one. This one, but um, they just look. Fabulous. Nearly round again. I'll show you in a second what it's looking like at the centre. And um, you'll be able to see how the centre sort of forms itself. So you have your knot. Hang on, I'm going to go quiet again because I'm dealing with these thread ends. Where you've centred the spokes, it forms a sort of little bubble. I'll show you an example of what I mean in a second. Um, so you get this sort of almost like a wheel hub at the centre. And I think the only other thing I would say about as you're stitching is you just need to make sure that when you. Right, so I'm just coming through to under two here. When you go back over one, just make sure your needle is over the thread that's worked along the back, um, because otherwise you're going to cause your spokes to look very strange. And it working always over the previous stitch sort of helps tighten your weave at the centre, because your your sort of each stitch pulls the previous stitch in. So if I bring that up, keeping that off focus for you, so you've got your sort of little wheel hub, and you can start seeing those spider's web spokes starting to form. And it is just a case of working round. And if you want to change threads, you do it in exactly. The way you would expect so you can just leave a loose end and then weave it in but i tend to find that taking my needle through the stitches back to the center and bringing it out there and just snipping it off close to the center works a treat and then you would start a new thread just in the way that we started this one by putting a tail down one of the spokes and um wrapping the tail in as you go along and so you can change colours fairly simply like that and make all sorts of interesting designs. Got a very fine thread here, made all the wrong choices. This is my own fault. I wanted to do this lovely variegated thread because I thought it would look nice, but it's very fine and so it is going to take quite a long time to fill. Um, so I'll do this a little bit more and then I will show you how to do a scalloped edge. I'll do a scalloped edge on this one and it will show you how to do that. Back to my thread ends again. making sure they're both caught in. So 
quite a little bit of a clump there forming so I'm going to sort that out shortly anyway. So it's, it's good to do this somewhere where you've got plenty of space for your thread to go. So half of my problems here are created by the fact that, as I say, my uh, camera stand is exactly where I don't need it to be. But it's the only way I can get an overhead shot. So um, my room where I do all my filming is, is not a big room. Um, it's the best setup we can manage in the house that we've got so um it mostly works very well but as the minute you've got a really long thread it's just in the wrong space so i had similar problems when i made my weaving video because you tend to be working with quite long lengths for weaving so yeah it's tricky but we just do the best we can with what we've got So every now and again, I also like to just push my stitches into the centre. So that's that's how you do that. Right, I'm going to untangle this knot, not looking at it. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, I'm just checking up the... Uh, Yeah, um, linen threads can be really buttery. So that natural linen thread that I've got on the card, this one here, is like sewing with butter. Um, it depends whether they have been treated. So what's happened here, this is a good example, is because I'm constantly looping around the spokes, you can see it's actually twisted together. You can see how it's all twisted up there and that's what creates noose knots now this one should come loose really easily because it's a mercerized thread it's really silky um so i'm just looking for where where the loops are caught so much easier if i could see um, just going to loosen off where that loop is caught and then new knots are actually really simple to get rid of i'm just trying to get my needle into what the bit that appears to be a knot and once you release some of the tension on it snot will release pretty much by itself okay so I just loosen some of the tension on that twist and so what I'm going to do now is just let my needle hang loose and I like to just run the thread through my fingers I'm keeping my, fin my fingers quite tight so that's where the um, twists have gathered again so I'm just going to get my needle into that loop. So it is really worth every now and again just pausing and allowing your thread to untwist itself. And then I should have probably stopped five minutes ago to do this. And then I wouldn't have so many clusters of tangles. So all this is is where there's not actually a knot there. It is just where the thread has twisted itself together and caught, caught a loop of itself into some of the twists. So it's just about releasing some of the pressure where it appears to be knotted. If you can get your needle in between the twisted threads, just ease it a little bit.
it'll just once you get that there you go it just just comes loose so i'm just gonna untwist again and your needle will spin and your thread will be untwisted so i'm just letting that hang loose i wish i could show you the needle spinning just off camera but the thread's too long so i'm just gonna pause that there and i'll attempt to show you how to do the scalloped edge um so you need a sharper needle for the scalloped edge so i'm just gonna snip that one off And I'm just going to get another length of this thread that I'm using here, this variegated one. Um, okay. And you want a, I mean, a straw needle would be really good for this. This isn't a straw needle, it's just one of my uh, normal embroidery needles. But you could use a straw needle, that would work quite well so what i'm going to do is i'm going to find where my spoke is and i'm just going to slide my needle underneath my spoke like that and i'm just going to make a series of loose stitches so i'm going to leave a tail there and i've just taken my needle over that spoke i've caught in a couple of my blanket stitches there at the end just at the edge of my wheel. So I've just made a little loop over that stitch and I'm going to where my next spoke is and take my needle underneath a couple of the blanket stitches at the end. Hope you can see what I'm doing. Like that. And I don't want to pull it too tight. I just want to leave a little bit of a loop and I want to try and make these even. Then I'm going to go over the top of my stitch over the top of those stitches that I've caught and back through again. So I'm sort of using that as a little back stitch to hold that loop that I've just made in place. And I'm going to do that again at my next spoke. I'm using my spokes as a guide because I want my scallops to follow the spokes. So you can see on this one. The scallops go where the spokes are. I'm going to do that all the way around. I'm just I'm trying to read comments at the same time. <laughs> um, I I wish I had a spare pair. I break my glasses so often, Karen, that I um, I never have spares. Um, I'm I'm usually pretty good, but um, I just forgot it's half term i've got that i've got that friday feeling that feeling of being free and it's made me too casual <laughs> um i'm too relaxed clearly because even after the weekend i i'm very fortunate because i get a two week half term which is quite unusual in state secondary schools um so I get an extra bonus week and we make up that time elsewhere in the year. Um, I have slightly shorter holidays elsewhere, but this is the longest term for us. And it is just so delightful to have two weeks in the autumn term. It's just such a long and dark and bleak term. And it's, it's, it's a joy. So knowing that i've got two weeks off has made me go a bit giddy over this weekend <laughs> um first weekend i've had in the last seven where i haven't felt under some sort of pressure or another so it made me relax too much i got my glasses it was one of those i've told myself all morning don't forget your glasses and i got them at the last minute so there we go. <laughs> so if you notice, I just noticed there that my loop was going to be twisted. And so what I did was I just pulled the stitch all the way through that the twist was the other side of where I'd caught it in. 
um, and then I've loosened it back up. So I'm just taking my time with this because brushing got me nowhere so far today. There for the world to see. What what does the old saying say? More haste, less speed. So if you if you rush this, this is a lovely one to do on the sofa. So one of mine I made last night while I was watching a film and sat. It's so repetitive. You don't once you've got going, you don't really have to think too much about what you're doing. You can just keep wrapping and it just forms without you even realising it's happening. So it's it's a really good meditative one, this one. I'm just trying to keep the size of my loops fairly even, almost back to the start now. And I've got a little tail there. There's half the art of dorset buttons is managing those tails. But I'll show you what I'm going to do with that. And so that's my last loop and I'm back to the start. And I've got this tail here and I'm just going to take that tail round the hoop, that loop. Um, I'm just, I've got my tail end here where I started. I'm just going to fold that back over the loop there. And we're just going to work one kit stitch again. So um, I think I'm going to work anti-clockwise. It's my preferred way of doing blanket stitch. I don't know why. Um, so I'll come to that tail. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll do it over this first loop just so that it's out of the way. So as I'm working my blanket stitch, I'm going to catch in that tail. So I'm just going to blanket stitch over that loop that we've made around the edge. Pull it nice and tight. And this one, I'm got, I need you to count for me, folks. That was one. This is two. I can't talk, stitch and count at the same time. Um, so I'm just making sure that tail end is going through my blanket stitch rather than sticking out in front of it. So you want to try and get the same number of stitches onto each loop because that's how you're going to make sure that they're nice and even. So I'm catching in my tail. I'll make that four. Hope you make it four too. Five. And again, once once that tail's in, go a few more times over the tail, just so that it's nicely wrapped in place. There, I do the loop so it's sticking out the front. I don't want my, I'm going to loosen that blanket stitch off enough to pull that tail through to the back. Okay, so I've got, got plenty of stitches on there. I'm just going to trim that tail a bit shorter. It's going to be way too long, and then probably in the next two stitches that will disappear. You won't even see that it's there. So try and keep your 
blanket stitches. I, I can say I've already twisted one of those, but it's not the end of the world. Um, try and keep your threads lying nice and flat against each other as you're doing your blanket stitch. And that will give you the best finish on your scalloped edges. I've totally lost count. If you've been counting, do let me know how many stitches I've done. I'm going to put a couple more in. So all we're doing really is trying to cover up that loop that we made around the edge with blanket stitch. So once you're the space that that loop has created you can, I mean this it's essentially a buttonhole loop isn't it you could use that as an actual buttonhole so I could probably get one more in there make it look nice and full and then even up next bar so I don't know how many um, I don't know how many stitches that was. So now I need to get to my next loop. So I'm going to go underneath my blanket stitches that are covering my ring again and come up the other side so that I can make my next scallop. And I just repeat the process. So I'm just untwisting that thread again, thinning needle. We just repeat that process all the way around. I, I do quite like the scallops. Um, I, I am very much a bit, uh, well, I just, I do like the, the sort of, I do like them without. I love how, how crisp that is and how clean around the edge so I, I i don't know you can decide whether you prefer them with or without scallops i think it's quite nice to experiment a little bit um and it's going to add a little bit of variety to my panel as well Twenty three blanket stitches thank you karen that really helps <laughs> I've now lost count here though, so <laughs> uh, I don't know how, how many I've done so far. So I'm nowhere near 23, I know that. Um, and because this is all connected, you can adjust the scallops. So you can make them, like this one's gone a bit narrow. So I can just release, because they were, even to start off with they will be even again as long as you keep the same number of blanket stitches and um, keep rebalancing it easing it through with your needle just to make the scallops the same size um, so just they are quite forgiving these buttons they it's not not the end of the world if things are too tight or too loose because they can often be corrected quite easily so um, if your scallops change shape if the loops change size you can always ease them back through so another one Unthreaded again. I really don't want to knot it on this time because it just makes it a little bit trickier to work with. 
particularly when you're at either end of the scallop just need your needle to be maneuverable so i don't think that's 23 but that's that's how you make scallops anyway um so you just keep working around like that until you're back to the beginning and then to finish off your thread you can either work it through the blanket stitches on your scallop or you can work it underneath some of the threads on your dorset button so i'm going to finish that later finish the remaining two i just want to show you how I'm going to attach them to my felt. So they're going to be fairly short. Our live stream today is going to be fairly short. I'm going to attach these just like I would if I was attaching them as buttons and for a, a needle that this thread will go through. Got loads of needles off. Uh, out shot um, so I've just got a little length of thread here and you've got uh, you've got a choice really you can either make a shank so I'll show you how to make a shank first of all um, I'm just going to catch my thread into the center of the back of the dorset button so if you look at the back it, it is it's just weaving it's just quite meshy and actually if you um because what we've done here is make fabric really we've made a woven fabric that fills our button um so you can you can stitch through it just like you would stitch through any other fabric um so i've got a knot in the end there you don't have to have a knot but and if you want to so I'm just going to make a loop like that. Just going steady because I don't want to catch in other parts of my button. Just want to take my needle through that centre of the back. And I don't want a massive loop. So you can see I've got a loop there, I think that's still probably a little bit too big. That. And I'm gonna just repeat that a couple of times. So I've got three stars to work with. It will be enough actually because it's uh, quite a thick thread and then we're just going to do that blanket stitch again so we're making a buttonhole loop uh, buttonhole bar on the back that works as a shank for the button so you could actually make these and put them on a coat or a garment um, because that that is what they were originally made for so i'm creating that shank on the back by making a, a small buttonhole bar we're just trying to avoid taking our needle through any other part of the button on the back Working really gently. Like that. And so we've got a little loop there that we can get up. We've got a little loop there on the back that we can then use to stitch our button on. So I'm going to take my thread through and position the button work out where my needle's going to have to go back down 
then if I just turn my felt to the side, I'll be able to see I can bring my thread back up and just take it back through that loop again and sew it on just like I would sew on any other shank button. Just with a few stitches. That you could um put sort of bit of padding underneath the back of this so that it stands off the surface of the felt a little bit. Um, you could put a little bit of card or a few circles of felt underneath it so that it stands up. So that is perfectly well attached there. That's one way of doing it. That's adding a shank and stitching it on like that. So I'm just going to finish that off at the back there. But I really like the back, Karen. I'll show you the back of some of the other ones that I've done in a second. Um, and actually, there are lots of examples. You can there are Dorset buttons everywhere online. If you go on Pinterest and type in Dorset buttons, you'll see all sorts of delight. Um, you can display the back um, if if you want to. You do have to pay quite close attention to the back. So this one, I actually stitched so that the back would show so that's why there's quite a lot of lumpiness on the front where i've woven the wool in because i wanted it to be i wanted the back to be the bit that was on show and so that's the back of that one um i really like it and it's that's why it's important to always be going over the previous stitch because it, it the back lays just beautifully if you do that um that's another back uh, this is like a chenille wool really love using that because it sort of cover it covers its own looks like velvet that's it there at the end it sort of covers its own lines and the the sort of fluffiness fluffiness of it blurs the lines between the wraps and so you end up with just lovely almost velvety surface and I deliberately kept these quite loose because I didn't put many spokes on I wanted there to be uh, light showing through that made these as almost like a, a wall hanging um, and never never finished it in the end so um, left it so that lots of light came through so that's the back of those this one you can see I've got my ridge around the back and this one I really wanted the front on show so I wasn't too worried about what the back looked like um because it was the front that I was after um and again that one look that one looks quite nice I think at the, at the back um I have finished off threads on the back there though so uh, but you could have like a rosette in the center um and this one's a good one to show you what I meant about the, the sort of wheel hub at the centre. See if they will focus. Um, there we go. Um, so you've got that sort of where I've pulled all the spokes together at the centre, you've got that sort of almost like a button that little dimple at the center there and i i, really, I just really like it that's that one really close so another way of stitching on is to catch down the back spoke so you can um because you've got double spokes, I can get my needle just under one there. You can catch down the spoke at the back in a few places. So I've knotted my thread there and I'm just going to come up from behind. Try and see if I can show you. And I've just passed my needle over the back spoke and under the front spoke. And I'm taking my needle back down almost where it came up. And so it doesn't affect the look of the button at all. And I'm just going to go every other spoke or so 
so I've caught the back spoke in and then I'm going back down again coming up just to the side of the spoke taking my needle through in between the front and back spoke and back down and you can't see these stitches really on the front um at all it's quite quite a discreet approach i will show you a third way in a second and and really you choose whichever method best suits the design of your button so this is a good one for if you've got space in your button so because i've left gaps um this is a really good one for a button where there's gaps there's not very many places to put your thread so again finish off on the back you can see it's almost like running stitch on the back um but it's pretty much invisible on the front i'll show you the front ticks. So you can see on the front you can't see those stitches really at all hold it in place you could stitch it down by the scallops as well um but i sort of want those to rise up a little bit so that's fine um the final way of doing it is and i'm just i'm using this chunkier thread so you can see that it it works quite well um, let me use the, the thread that I actually use for this. It's dark. I don't want the contrast to be too great. So this is a thread called Moonrock. It's 254, this beige one from BPs if you're interested in the actual colour. This one was um, 255 or 255. It's sort of, I can't remember what it's called. A very very pale peach um i really like it because it does seem to change color depending on what you put it with so another way of doing it is by stitching through your woven bits and uh, where was i going to put that one up here um so i've got the same color thread that i worked with and i'm going to come up just the side of a spoke and go over the spoke and i'm gonna just pull that thread quite tight and it will disappear into the wraps on the spoke let me do that again up close get it to focus focus now look so um I'm just going to come up. There we go. To the left of the spoke, take it over the spoke, keeping it hooked nicely in. And then when I pull that thread tight, it disappears into the spoke and you can't see it. So that's another way of doing it. So I'm just going to again go every other spoke. Um, and that is a good one for if you've woven your button quite densely like this one is um, it's a good way of attaching it onto your fabric nice and discreet and very secure of course attaching it like this you couldn't use it as a button um, if you want to use these as actual buttons um, you, you have to make the shank at the back make them make it possible to get a buttonhole over it okay. um, but if you're using them decoratively and you just want to attach them to a background that's the way to do it so they are nice and secure now this one is too loose so I'm going to add some stitches around the edge just to make it sit down and not wobble about so I will complete the two buttons that are left <laughs> um, that have given me nothing but trouble um, during this video um, and I will show you the finished piece but that's where it's headed you could of course just do some you could just make one 
larger one you could make um so these bangles fit nicely you could just make a single large um dorset button if you wanted to and just have one um wool is a lot easier to work with it doesn't tangle up in quite the same way i i don't remember i did make these quite a long time ago but don't remember having any issues when i was working on this large scale with the the sort of soft wool um i think it it does work quite well so you could use tapestry wool or just if you've got some yarn remnants a great sort of yarn stash buster of leftover yarns at the end of knitting projects i don't knit i just acquire bits of wool here and there um so you could do that um you could experiment with the number of spokes and the number of wraps and things like that. Variegated threads, you can play around to your heart's content with variegated threads. Um, do look on Pinterest for inspiration because there's loads of ideas and loads of, sort of colour combinations. You'll see loads of traditional dorset buttons. It's even possible to do this with thin ribbon. You can do it as ribbon embroidery, which I don't tend to use ribbon very much. I'm, I, I have a stash of ribbon. I tend to use it just as trims. I've not really experimented with ribbon embroidery, but I know it can look really beautiful and, and it does work with ribbon. Um, so if you are a fan of working with ribbon, you could have a play with that. Um, there are loads of options and um lots of lots of room to play and experiment with this one now next week is our week five video and i was inspired even though it's it's been problematic today i was really inspired by the button making process and so i don't normally give away what's coming up but i am going to explore some more buttons next week so we're going to look at stitch buttons and trims and but buttons trims and edges we're going to explore next week so that will be a longer video because it's a week five project and it will be i'll be working on full size piece so i'll just get my wing in it book so these are our fifth week projects we i've been all the way through the book i've worked as a whole page spread so normally for a month we have our four panels and then for the fifth week project we've got this large panel that forms the back of a previous page so we're getting quite close to the end really we're in our fifth week week of october so my october page will be put together try to get all bits <laughs> covered in thread um so this is going to sit there like that and that's last week's so that will be the front of my october page then our fifth week project will be the back and then we've got four november panels and four december panels and although december is a five week month um it is christmas day and um new year's day or new year's eve are two of them so I'm not going to do, I will do a video for each week of December um, and I am going to do a live stream on New Year's Eve, but um, it won't be a stitch piece. I might look at what I'm going to do with the book and putting a cover on things like that. So I might talk you through that, but it's mostly going to be a flip through, I think. So it will just be sort of rounding off of the year and we'll do a flip through and look at all the pieces that we've done and I'll, I'll maybe let you into some secrets about which ones were more problematic than others and um, because some of them <laughs> I've got quite a lot of blooper reel for some of them um, and some of them were stitched during really quite turbulent periods because I know it can look like everything's smooth sailing when you're just seeing YouTube videos, but this has been quite a turbulent year in many respects. So um, I, for me, this book tells 
much more of a story than it appears to. So although we've got our, the story of our stitch journey and the story of our colour journey and our developing skills of, as we've gone through, there, there, are, there are certain panels which really highlight the fact that there was quite a lot going on in, in the wider world <laughs> around me at the time. So um, we'll do that at the end of the year. Um, I've had quite a few questions about um, what we're doing next year. Lots of people keep uh, messaging me and saying, I hope there's going to be another project next year. I'm I'm still settling on what I'm going to do. I've sort of been settled on something all year. And just in the last few months, I've, I've wondered about whether that's the best way forward. So um, I'm... I'm just waiting to come into land on what I'm going to do. But I'm, I do hope that um, I'm going to be able to do something similar next year. So the videos might take a slightly different format. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll keep you posted anyway. So we, I, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> um, and uh, people are finding our winking it project all the time so uh i won't be going anywhere i'm still going to be around uh making videos and hopefully getting people stitching so just and now i've untangled this let me just show you my little trick before i go or catching in the end so you can see there i've caught i've caught in the end and i've just pulled the thread right across the ring there um so this is my tail this is the ring that i was being blanket stitch around right at the start and I've got that tail sticking out there at the side and I've just pulled it through so that it crosses the ring and I find that it makes it really easy to catch the ending neatly so if I just stitch now gradually that will just pull round to the edge of the ring so it, it gets it out of my way quite early on relatively early on in the process and keeps it under control so I don't have to hold it all the time while I'm blanket stitching um I'm just wondering if now that I've calmed down a bit and it's all working okay <laughs> wondering whether I can show you the spokes process just before we go so if I can just get round this um this hoop so as I stitch that tail end is just going to get pulled around to the edge and so the bit that's sticking out will shorten as it curves out to the ring and I haven't got to worry about what's happening with it because it's caught in place and it will just self-correct and I've Found that to be the easiest way of managing that tail end in the starting phase. Look, everything's behaving itself now. Why couldn't it have done this at the start? It's because I was stressy. But even my thread is behaving itself. I don't want to speak too soon. I think catastrophic will happen at any moment. So if I just finish this off. It is worth pulling it through bit by bit. You can see me sort of pulling a little bit through and then a little bit more. Um, and it's a good way of keeping track of which bit, bit of thread is where. I'm just going to untangle it. Let it. Hang loose and twist. Let's see if I can show you these spikes. Oh, it was going so well, wasn't it? Because I didn't catch the tail in. I had to do two things at once there. I 
Right. Let me know very quickly. <laughs> um, let me know what you're going to do with the rest of your Sunday. I hope I haven't scared you off Dorset buttons. They are much more straightforward than they than I have made them look today. So um, apologies if it looks like a really difficult process because it really isn't. Um, so I'm just um, almost back to the start there. A few more stitches and we'll be there. And then I can show you the spokes process properly rather than just talking you through it. Oh, crikey. Sorry. That was me hitting the camera stand again. Of course, I was going to get away with it, but I lift out. Right, here we go. So that's me back to the start, and it's a little bit loose, but um. I think, I think it'll, it'll work enough for me to show you. So that's me back to the start. Those stitches could be tighter. Stop. So just slide them around. They are a bit too loose. Bear with, bear with. I'm just shuffling up blanket stitches just so that the, the metal ring is completely covered. So it is worth doing that so that you don't have bits of whatever's underneath showing through. Again, just turn it round. So I'm, I'm now going to spin my edge, that raised ridge, round to the back. This is what I I would have done at the beginning. This that process. So I'm just sliding it on the ring so that the ridges are at the back. That's my tail end that's sticking out. So now I can trim that off. And that um, that gets rid of that. Probably still do with putting another few blanket stitches on, but we'll leave it there. So what I'm going to do now, I've got my ridges at the back. I'm going to pull my thread down the center like that, take it back over the top, and then working clockwise, I'm just going to wrap the spokes around like that. And sometimes you get it first time, and sometimes it takes a couple of goes just to get them evenly spaced. It's almost like it only reveals itself at the end whether you've got them in the right place or not. But like like I showed you, um, you can move them once you got started. Wasn't happy. With that first attempt. I'm just going around again. You can see that it's very much a sort of star and it looks quite uneven. So when I've got all the way around and I've got a spoke evenly spaced, what I'm going to do is look for where it's gone most to the edge. So you can see the, the joining point is way over there and that's where I'm going to take my needle down. So I want to find my way through so that I'm inside the spokes and pull my needle through like that. I'm so glad that I'm showing you this. I feel much better. <laughs> and you can see already 
those spokes have paired up more so they're more aligned with each other um, and what I'm going to do is look for places where they're not aligned so they're not aligned over here so that's why I'm going to bring my needle back up and we're just working around the centre now so I'm bringing my needle back up there and crossing over to another part of the wheel where the spokes are not quite aligned and then I've got a little space here I'm going to bring my needle up there and I'm just going to work the stitches around the centre until I've got clear pairs of spokes and like I showed you before I can lift the spokes around just to even them up. I've caused myself a problem because I haven't quite got enough blanket stitches there but I want to show you this process. I'm just lifting spokes around a little bit. Make sure they are even. And then when I'm happy, could do with one. When I'm happy that I've got my spokes kind of lined up where I want them to be, do here. Like that. Then I can take them down. And because I've got enough thread this time, I can then just start my spider's web wraps straight away. So I'm just looking for wear off taking my thread down and pretty much bring it up anyway you just want to not undo the stitch that you've just done so down through one under two Back over. Forward two. Back over one. Forward two. Back over one. And then this one, I would be able to um, complete it all in the same strand of thread and so that is your ideal setup really I've a little bit rush but again all I have to do is just lift the spokes a little bit and I can even up that center so that's how you would start it off really um, just make sure you've got enough blanket stitch wraps and if your ridge moves its way to the front you just slide it round to the back again and carry on where you left off and just keep working around and making your buttonhole. So I will finish the I will finish these two off and post photos of them later. And that really is <laughs> it. So let me just have a look at the um uh let me just have a look at the comments before I go. Um <laughs> thank you, Sue. That's very kind of you. Um, yeah, but there are um, there are things to watch out for. So the length of thread really is, as you've seen, the the biggest trickiest thing with these. And um, if you just take your time, which is what I haven't been doing because I've been trying to show you quite quickly, you just take your time, keep your thread as straight as you can out to the side of you. Um, so you can see I've got it trailing off the table there. Keep your thread out to the side as straight as you can. Do it where you've got plenty of room for manoeuvre, which is another thing that I haven't got in this setup. Um, and uh, so that's one thing. And just be aware that they they are almost always self-correcting. So you can see that centre is not quite centre, but it will be if I just carried on and just manoeuvred the spokes a little bit none of the ones that i've made started off centered so this is all through just maneuvering the spokes as i've been working because they correct themselves they are 
really quite well behaved normally so definitely give them a go um so yeah i'm hoping that uh you're gonna have some fun with dorset buttons um and uh yeah i think uh i i quite like the fact that we we've documented more than just a stitching journey and i think we'll talk about more that more about that in our last one of the year um so do join me and I'll I'll talk quite candidly about the story that my book tells and and um we'll have a look back and think about the highs and lows of the year and, and things that um things that are stitching reveal. So I think we'll talk a lot about that later um in December. So uh yeah, good. I'm glad that you are all feeling <laughs> <laughs> like I haven't totally scared you off but you're quite inspired um Karen's watching Strictly very good I haven't been watching it this year we've been watching uh, we've actually been watching This Is Us on Amazon Prime which I can't recommend highly enough it's just a fabulous series if you haven't watched it um multi-award winning brilliantly performed very well written just loving it um so yeah that'll be good sue's going to be putting pages of the book together i had to i was very far behind so you might have seen my posting rate has dropped off significantly since i've been back at school but um i'm just finding my groove still so once once i'm in my routine i should be able to get back to posting more regularly and uh, you'll see that i had a sun flurry it was actually because i was off sick um had a horrible cold and stitching was very low demand so doing the blanket stitch edges was quite low demand so i managed to get my two pages put together for august and september so that's on the go and i've got my two weeks to catch up so look out for some um give you some spoilers about what's coming up um i am about to start my k page so that's coming i'm hoping to do my pattern for this and i'm hoping to release some more gemstone hoops so that's my little to-do list for my couple of weeks off so that's lots of fun to be had lots of pizza happening jolly good <laughs> um we're we're fish stew for some reason i don't even like fish i don't know why i'm doing that to myself but um that's what we're having for tea so there we go hope you um have enjoyed that oh pamela hello <laughs> um you can replay and i will warn you pamela if you're joining us now the uh beginning of this <laughs> live stream was one catastrophe after another so do feel free to skip to the good parts um so yeah I hope that's okay have a great rest of your day folks thank you for bearing with me while i fought with tangles of thread pamela just as an indication this is <laughs> this is the, the the ones that got away over here just off camera so there we go um i will post my finished panel later have a great time with your dorset buttons and um do let me know if you got into tangles i would love it if you post your dorset button pan panel do post any photos of any <laughs> tangles that you get into as extra photos because it, it i think let's all just celebrate i tell my kids in school that never try and eradicate your mistakes because mistakes are just a natural part of the learning process and they demonstrate that you are improving all the time and you're reflecting on what you're doing and trying to improve so um yeah what i'd love to see is some beautiful dorset buttons and some photos of a big tangled mess so i i will be posting my photo of that um <laughs> and uh yeah let's let's see the fun that we all have at making our dorset buttons so have a great rest of your day can't wait to see what you create do share with hashtag FSH winging it and you can also add hashtag FSH winging it 43 and that will allow us to see all the Dorset button pieces together. I will see you next week for some more fun buttons. 
<laughs> with all of the tangles edited out and um and then it's our then we start November. November's going to be good. I've got some good things planned. Happy crafting, folks. Thank you for joining me and bearing with me while I unknotted thread for an hour and a bit. So, um, yeah, I will see you in the next video. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you soon.